The name killer whale is a misnomer. They're actually a type of dolphin, but they do love to kill things. Also called orcas, they're one of the ocean's top apex predators. This means that they themselves have no natural predators. Well, except for motorboats in SeaWorld. Orcas will eat over 140 species of fish, other marine mammals, and even moose. More on that one later. Orcas are able to kill pretty much anything largely because they're extremely intelligent. Their intelligence is comparable to chimpanzees, and some have even gone so far as to say that orcas are smarter than mud or even bricks. And like bricks, orcas work together to make something greater than themselves. Cooperation on top of intelligence is what gives them a flipper up as predators. Sure, an individual orca is a force to be reckoned with on its own, with males weighing in at up to 12,000 pounds and with lengths up to 26 feet long. For scale, imagine a mid-sized U-Haul truck swimming after you at speeds up to 25 miles per hour and with a bite force of 19,000 psi. For puny, pathetic apes like most of us, this is quite terrifying. But if you happen to be a sperm whale, an orca attack is more like a human getting rammed by a Power Wheels Barbie Jeep Wrangler. One is easy enough to ward off, but a synchronized fleet of vengeful Barbie Jeep Wranglers? That's a whole nother story. Orcas live and hunt in matrilineal groups called pods. Pods can range from between 5 and 30 members, and pods all over the world have developed unique and creative hunting techniques passed down from mother to daughter. In a D-Day inspired maneuver, orcas will storm a beach to grab unsuspecting sea lions. Orcas will sometimes beach in squads, one orca leading the charge while others flank in to make sure their prey can't escape. Unlike D-Day, however, orcas have never been observed sustaining injury while beaching themselves, despite the maneuver being super risky. Orcas near Norway cooperate to munch on herring. First, a pod cooperatively herds the herring into tight balls. They do this by slapping at the fish with their tails and flashing their bellies at them. Their bellies clearly frighten the fish because their white markings look like spooky ghosts. But they will also make use of one of the scariest weapons known to whale kind. Sensitive viewers may want to turn away right now. That's right, orcas will blow bubbles at the fish. Once the pod has herded the fish together, they take turns killing them with their tails and eating them. This process of orcas swimming around and around the clump of fish to feed looks a bit like a carnivorous merry-go-round, thus the strategy's name of carousel feeding. In the Arctic, penguins and seals will perch on ice floes to avoid predators in the water, but orcas have figured out how to eat these guys anyway. A pod will swim together under an ice floe to create a wave that knocks the hapless creature off of it. If only we could harness some orcas to finally tip the notorious club penguin iceberg. Interestingly, not every seal that gets knocked off an iceberg flow is eaten. Some just get plopped right onto another ice flow, implying that orcas will sometimes perform this technique for practice, or just for fun. It should come as no surprise then that orcas are kinda sorta jerks. One almost exclusively pescatarian population in the Pacific Northwest will harass and or kill neighboring porpoises and seals for no other apparent reason than it just seems like they're enjoying it. But other populations in the region do actually prey upon all sorts of aquatic animals, like dolphins, small or young whales, seals, and moose. Alright, now I know what you're thinking. Hold on, moose are not aquatic animals. I mean, they look about as buoyant as a bag of bowling balls. And to you, I say, yes, they are as buoyant as a bag of bowling balls. If all the bowling balls are less than 12 pounds and so less dense than water. Moose hair, you see, is hollow. Like, for instance, a hollowed out bowling ball. This insulates moose in the depths of winter against temperatures as low as negative 60 degrees Celsius. And the hollow hairs also act as hundreds of thousands of tiny little life vests, helping keep moose afloat. But unlike bowling balls, moose are great swimmers. In the water, they can reach the breakneck pace of five miles per hour. All right, that doesn't sound that fast, but compared to us, it is. An average human swimming speed is only about 2 miles per hour. Michael Phelps' record of 1.42 minutes for the 200 meter freestyle makes his average speed during that race only about 4.7 miles per hour. All I'm saying is that if Canada wants to get a place on the stands at the next Olympics, maybe they should just add a moose to their 2024 team. So moose are great in the water, but what are they splashing around for anyway? Surprisingly, like the killer whale, moose is actually a misnomer, and moose are actually a type of dolphin. Okay, not actually, but they're not 
nostrils do act almost like blowholes. Valves pinch their nostrils shut when they go underwater. This helps moose hold their breath for up to a minute and dive as deep as 6 meters. Down here, moose forage for aquatic vegetation, especially during the late summer season when pickings become slim back above the surface. Moose will also keep cool underwater during the summer, when it reaches a brutal 60 degrees Fahrenheit, which many moose report is about as hot as a volcano on fire, at least for them. Sometimes they even drop by backyards uninvited for impromptu pool parties. And this is where the orcas strike. Or, well, where they would strike if they could fit in a backyard pool or even get into backyard pools. But who knows, maybe orcas have an alliance with the It Clown who helps smuggle them around sewers. Where orcas actually attack moose though is off the coast of Canada and Alaska, while moose swim between the various islands to forage. Moose carcasses have been found off the coast of Vancouver, with lacerations consistent with orca bites. Don't ask in the comments how scientists figured out what orca bites look like. Let's just say some grad students came out the other end missing some fingers and legs. Despite being stronger swimmers than you might expect, a tired moose is still no match for a pod of orcas. In fact, orcas use persistence hunting strategies. A pod will run down young or elderly whales until they are exhausted and pull them down below the water. Orcas will even smother their prey's blowhole in order to drown them. So a tired, slow-moving moose would be an easy target. However, it's unclear whether orcas hunt moose opportunistically, the same way you might eat a stray hot dog sitting on a sidewalk, or if orcas attack moose just for fun, the same way you might eat a stray hot dog sitting on a sidewalk. But don't worry too much, there has never been a recorded orca attack on a human in the wild. Yet.